Hello, Michael Swain here after Kansas football's 42-14 win over Houston here at Arrowhead Stadium. And that's more like it for KU. That's a, a really important win for KU in the broader context of this season. And it comes with a, a pretty comprehensive performance in all three phases of the game. I'd probably say KU's best performance of the season, even if you include the Lindenwood game. Um, this was top to bottom, very crisp. And I think we could start probably a few different places here. The offense was really, really good. I will talk about Jalen Daniels. The defense, I think, was better. K was able to get some pass rush, um, get some tackles for loss. Special teams overall, pretty solid. Um, but I think for KU going forward, probably the most important thing to come out of this game was the return of the explosive passing attack. You've watched the games, I've watched the games this season. That has been something that has been lacking from KU. You can look at the run game, right? It has been incredible. It has been elite all season. Um, any sort of way you want to look at it, right? Average total yards per game. If you want to look at EPA per rush, um, any sort of the different metrics that measure how good your line is. Like KU has been in the top 15, top 10, and now the top five of the country throughout the course of the season running the ball. What's been missing is that explosive passing attack that we saw last year where KU was able to move the ball quickly, score in an instant, and you saw that here today. Obviously, you could start with the first play, right, after the first interception when uh, Jalen throws it to, to Quentin Skinner right back there. And that's a true 50-50 ball. But earlier in the year, to me at least, it felt like those plays weren't even close, right? The ball wouldn't have been in the right spot for Quentin Skinner to go and make a play on it, right? You can remember the last time KU played here at Arrowhead. The amount of times Jalen tried to go and find you know, Luke Grimm and they were just a, a little bit off, or Quentin Skinner um, dropping a pass, right? There were just little moments that made it where it wasn't in sync. And I think you saw everything come into sync today. And look, KU's wide receivers made some great plays, right? Quentin Skinner making that 50-50 catch. Lawrence Arnold making that spectacular one right back here. Like that was one of the, I think that may have been better than Skinner's catch, which could end up being on the, the Moss segment on Monday Night Football here in a couple of days. But that for me was the most encouraging part. And the fact that it was consistent. It wasn't just those two plays and that's it. Throughout the course of the game, KU was able to push the ball down the field and get chunk gains. And that is so important for this offense going forward because we have seen KU control the clock. We have seen KU execute run plays, but it's really hard to execute for four quarters straight. And when you look at the teams KU is going to play going forward, Kansas State, Iowa State, BYU, three teams at the top of the conference. And you have to be able to score quickly and score fast because you're not going to be able to execute every single play on every single drive to score 28 to 35 points. And so it's super important to be able to push the ball down the field. And that's what I think is super uh, great for KU about today. Jalen finishes the game 11 yards per attempt, maybe even 11.8, I want to say. 76% completion rate. He looked like the old guy. And it's so interesting to think back to the TCU game here when I said he wasn't a difference maker at the time. And he wasn't. He was not completing the big throws that make you a difference maker. He was completing the throws that any quarterback in college football can make. But today was the day when you saw that talent really show up. Um, you know, if you're watching on ESPN Plus, I feel really bad for you because they did you a disservice, especially on the Trevor Wilson catch. That was quite literally like right behind me here. That was one of the best throws I've ever seen Jalen Daniels make. He's on the run, like does a uh, like mid-air type of jump throw, and it's right on the money to Trevor Wilson. Like That was an elite throw, and you're seeing those elite throws show up, and that is going to, I think, give people hope going into the, the final half of the season. You know, Can you have a quarterback that can go make those, oh my God, plays? And today Jalen showed that, and that is so crucial for KU going forward. Um, Devin Neal continues to have a fantastic season. Another 100-yard rushing game. Three scores. He is getting closer to the all-time rushing yards record at Kansas. There's a good chance he breaks the next week against Kansas State. Devin even admitted post-game when I asked him. Um, it would be a picture-perfect type of record-breaking performance. It would make it even more picture-perfect drives if KU wins the football game. But um, that's a different conversation. Uh, defensively for KU, I think there's some good stuff. Obviously, Kobe Bryant, three interceptions. Uh, I think it's the top, 
it, so it ties the record for most in a game, which was set in 1958. Long time ago, um, a really great performance and really impactful for Kobe. You think about the times when he did it, right? The first one comes on Houston's first drive of the game. There's the one at the end of the first half. Like those are crucial, crucial plays, the time of the game. And I feel like those are the plays that KU's been missing. You know, when Kobe had the one right before halftime, I thought back to UNLV at the end of the first half in that game when Kobe jumps up trying to make the interception and it goes over his head, UNLV player catches it, scores a touchdown, changes the game. And today he made the plays. And to me, just top to bottom, I think probably broadly, this game is the type of performance from KU when those high leverage plays were made. And I think for so much of this season that has been lacking. Um, also positive for the defense is obviously 12 tackles for loss. Don't know what to make of it. Houston's offensive line sucks. They rank, I think, in the bottom like 10 in the FBS and in pro football focuses pass blocking, like overall grades. So how much pressure are you allowing um, on a given play? And Houston had to change quarterbacks. Chris got hurt, um, according to, to Willie Fritz. He had a hamstring injury, so he left the game. Donovan Smith can't read pressure, and so KU did a great job of dialing up pressures and really uh, getting after the quarterback, so that was good as well. So overall, you know, this game goes in a positive way for KU. There are positive aspects of this performance, and now it's all about taking the momentum into Kansas State. And can KU do that? Because this is going to be a, a really fascinating game because KU has the talent, right? Everyone knows it. It's can the team execute? And I'm really fascinated to see health-wise how KU is going into Manhattan next week. Obviously today, KU is down, you know, Devin Dye, Jalen Dye, Mason Ellis. Um, at linebacker position, Logan Brantley, he's done for the year with an injury. Um, Tristan Fletcher is out with an injury. And KU is playing a redshirt freshman, Taylor Davis. Shout out to Taylor Davis. I thought he had a really solid game in his first career start. Caleb Purdy, a redshirt sophomore, I want to, yeah, redshirt sophomore. Um, he got some reps too, and those guys are playing alongside O.J. Burroughs. You did not notice them outside of, I think, the one miscommunication there in the first half where Houston scored. Um, so those guys really did perform well, and obviously it's huge for KU to have Cornell Wheeler back because Cornell, I mean, he is one of the top two most important players for KU, maybe even the most important player for KU on defense. I think there's a huge difference in KU's linebacker room when Cornell's on the field versus when he is not. So huge for KU to get him back. Obviously now KU's got to get healthy overall heading into Manhattan. So those are my thoughts. Good win for KU. Now it's all about building on the momentum. Can they do it? I don't know. We'll have to see. But Lance Leipold said this will be really big for the team's confidence. He said it was, um, he used words fragile again, describing kind of the team's psyche going into this one. It sounds like I think generally people are pretty confident coming out of this one. And now it's all about taking that confidence and turning that into motivation to go into Manhattan and snap the losing streak for KU against K-State. So that's what I've got. It's different doing these after wins, but as always, thanks for watching the videos. We've got plenty of content up on fog.net for you. Uh, podcast is always coming on Sunday. Basketball season's here, late night in the fog, Friday night. Um, busy times ahead. We're in the busiest part of the year for for KU fans, and we'll have the content coming at fog.net, so make sure you're staying tuned. If you like the videos, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment. All that good stuff helps us reach a whole new audience, which is what we're about, trying to talk about Kansas with other Kansas fans. So thanks always for watching. Talk to you all again soon.